one night I slept in the car park. I got attacked by a, gr a gang of people. So yeah, I was like urinated on things like this. And there's nothing you can do really. It's just, you feel helpless. You feel, you feel, you feel like shit, to be honest. Yeah, I grew up in Littlemore, and my childhood, to be honest with you, I don't really remember much of it, um, apart from going to special needs schools. I suffered with ADHD, anxiety, depression, also autistic. I was bullied through school for being different. But some days, you know, you just get called thick and stupid because you, you wasn't as, as, as far like, past them, as clever as them. So yeah, you should get a bit of stick for that. It made, it made me come to the point of wondering why I had what I had and wondering if I could take it away back then, but I couldn't. It was, it was difficult, but as you get older, as you get older from going through school, you just learn to deal with it. You know, at the end of the day, everyone's different. We all have our own special traits and special needs and things like that. My first experience of homelessness was due to, um, not getting on with family, a bit of um, you know family differences, and my first experience of it was I was about um, 15. I remember it like nine o'clock. It was yesterday. I slept on in, in a car park in Oxford City Centre, and just basically my clothes and my coat that I had with me. It's gonna sound weird, but I enjoyed it because it gave me the freedom. I never had no pressures around me. I had n nobody going on at me. I never had no worries, all, all over. it was just like me and the elements. So far I've stayed in 27 homeless hostels and homeless uh, places where you can get your head down, basically. Uh, it may even be more than that. It's just a case of my mental health was bad at the time. I was drinking to try and mask my problems, and it just, you know, just didn't work out, and I ended up walking away. I was in Birmingham before I came back to Oxford, and I was in the hostel there, which was going great, but they only give you six months. And that's either the case, I'd move on to a never hostel, which is less supportive when I needed the support, or go back on the streets. I was getting to the factor where I was stabilising and getting to the factors where I was, you know, almost ready to talk about the problems and find answers to them. But it's the fact of they only give you, only give you six months at the hostel, no matter what you're doing. When I first came in, it felt a bit weird because it was more like a, a homely feel more than a hostilised feel. And it was more the fact of, right, how long have I got here? That was my biggest fear because I'm thinking, is it worth me getting settled just to be unsettled again? But after finding out, you know, they, they said, you know, you can take as long as you need here. I thought, yeah, this might be somewhere I can just get my head back down, get in touch with my family here in Oxford again, try and build some more. Uh, bridges and get some support I need. You've got friendly people here and it will also offer you a chance to train, to work, as well as sort out any personal or mental or like any evidence or issues, issues that you got without the pressure of having to be moved on in a certain amount of time. My, my training, what I've done so far, I've, I've done my uh, first aid, which I passed the, the first aid course. I've also done fire marshal, and I've done an MBQ level two in warehouse and training, and I've also done customer service. Treat treat the customer as basically as what as, as you'd like to treat yourself with, with courtesy and respect. You're getting that satisfaction of being able to help somebody. Well, what they've done basically is they've helped me get my autism uh, diagnosed properly, which I needed to be done because although I had it, but there wasn't no proof that I had it. Uh, they've also accompanied me to mental health appointments and uh, helped me get set up with mental health work workers. And they've also got support of uh, a key worker here who can sit down and talk to about it whenever I need to. The support workers here are worth the waiting gold. I mean, 
I wouldn't be where I am or who I am now without the support they, they give us. So it's just an amazing job I've been to do. Well, if you've got a problem, sort it out, because no matter how fast you run or where you run to, that problem's always going to be there with you. If you've got mental health, you can't run away from it. So the best it's hard it is to try and tackle it head on. Get the support for it. And, you know, basically keep questioning everything. Question everything. Yeah. The future is not yet written. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. I'd like to do the uh, electrician training in college. If I don't do that, I want, would like to do sport working. Sport work because I always believe in giving back. I've, I've, obviously, I've got so much experience of my life and how it all works from like sleeping in parks, just leaving my side of roads and stuff like that. So I know what people are going through. Instead of you, you having somebody comes in and is like, yeah, I'm trained to do this. That's all well and good being trained, but you, but you can't beat life experience. You can't match it to life experience at all. No.